hi hi and welcome welcome guys to another episode of motivational monday just fixing my cameras i have my instagram people thank you thank you heavenly father we want to thank you this afternoon for giving us all praises all honor and all glory dear lord jesus guide and protect each and every one that is watching us this afternoon asking for healing protection and your loving mercy dear lord help us to walk in your way and guide us and in your name i pray amen thank you thank you guys for another week sorry about that sean i can't talk to you right now on a motivational monday what's up All right, I know. I'll, I'll call it back when I finish nine o'clock. Okay, on Facebook Live. Okay, guys, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Let me mute my phone. Okay, yes. As I was saying, thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of Motivational Monday with me. Thank you. I know that you guys have a lot of things that you could have done but we here chilling and um we have great great things for you today and i have a super super guest i'll introduce her a little later on but for now i want to give you guys um you know my little health segment so we're going to start today by discussing a little about shingles um i went to the doctor and uh, he advised me that I should take the shingles um, vaccination. Now, the shingles vaccination is a two-dose vaccination. And um, especially when you're a particular age, um, it said shingles is a painful rash caused by Varsanella zozi, the same virus responsible for chicken pox. If you had chicken pox as a child, the virus hasn't completely gone away. It hides dormant in your body and can remerge many years later as shingles. Now, I couldn't remember when the doctor asked me if I ever had um, chicken pox. Um, I was too little and I know I probably got the vaccination for chicken pox. But, um, you know, he advised me that seeing that I'm at a particular age now that it will be wise to get it so who should get the shingles vaccine older adults are more likely to develop shingles this is why the single vaccine is recommended for people ages 50 and older shingles um, is approved by the fda um, as again the CDC recommends shingles for the prevention of shingle and related complication. The shingles vaccine is also recommended for anyone who has already gotten any type of shingles. Right? Again, as I said, uh, people 50 years and older are uncertain if they have or haven't had chicken pox in the past, have a history of shingles, have received the Zonavax vaccine in the past. Who should get the shingles vaccine? The shingles vaccine contains ingredients that can cause an allergic reaction in some people. Avoid the shingle vaccine if you have a severe reaction to the first dose of the shingles vaccine. So now I can tell you I had the vaccine last week and the most I feel or felt was my shoulder was sore a bit but other than that um i did feel it when she gave it to me i could have feel the the dosage going down right um if you have shingles currently are uh, currently breastfeeding or pregnant receive negative test result for vasilia zoza vaccine um so if you have these diseases it wouldn't be recommended Again, check with your doctor, right? But some people can experience side effects from the shingles vaccine like muscle pain, headache, fever, stomach pain, nausea. I didn't have any. People um, who got it too reported redness, swelling, 
itching soreness. I only experience the soreness. Um, again, after you get the vaccine, it's perfectly safe for you to be around friends and family members, even children. People rarely develop chicken pox like rash, chicken pox like rash, or their skin after they've been vaccinated. Through it is possible. So, again, if you are a particular age, consult with your doctor for the shingles vaccination. As I said before, it is a two-dose vaccination. It is good for people over 50 and it helps your immune system also, right? Also, my doctor also told me I want to read a little bit about pre-diabetic borderline. Now, as I said, and I have mentioned to you guys time and time again, diabetes run in my family, my mother's side and my father. So, my brothers and my sisters. So, I'm a very high candidate um, for being diabetic, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. So, what he told me, I'm pre-diabetic, meaning borderline. So, pre-diabetic means your blood sugar is higher than your normal, but not high enough to diagnose type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetic typically has no symptoms or sign. However, it can be associated with being overweight, which I'm not. Good night, Afia. Thank you, Hayden. Thank you, Hearts. Pre-diabetics is diagnosed with blood tests. Pre-diabetic levels of sugar fall in the range of 100 to 125 when blood glucose is measured fasting. Pre-diabetes is reversible by getting healthier. Treatment for pre-diabetics begin with getting more physical activities like exercise, help reverse pre-diabetes especially, right? Following a low glycemic index, low carb diet and following a healthy lifestyle help reverse pre-diabetes. Medication and dietary supplements also can use in the reverse of pre-diabetes management. Without making lifestyle changes or taking medication, the side effects for pre-diabetes is that it is likely to progress in type 2. Pre-diabetes is a term used to describe elevated blood sugar glucose that has not yet reached the threshold of a type 2 diabetes. Consider pre-diabetes a warning sign that it is time to take your health more seriously. Well, as you know, I have always taken my health seriously, but again, it runs in my family. So I have to be very, very, very careful, right? Pre-diabetes is a common condition in which the blood sugar is higher than normal but not yet high enough to be considered di diagnostic or diabetes. Pre-diabetics is type 2 diabetes and increase a person's risk of developing type 2, heart disease or stroke. The condition has also been referred to as impaired glucose tolerance, Ig, or impaired fasting glucose. While some people with pre-diabetes may experience some of the signs and symptoms of diabetes in most people, pre-diabetes does not cause specific signs associated with the symptom. Therefore, many people are unaware that they have pre-diabetes. Symptoms include excessive thirst, excessive hunger, frequent urination, and weight gain. What is the difference between pre-diabetes and type 2. Pre-diabetes occur when there is too much of glucose, right? Type 2 is a condition that occurs slowly over. The pancreas cannot produce enough insulin to keep up with the increased need to move sugar into the cells for energy. Medication and lifestyle lifestyle changes are necessary to manage blood sugar level and avoid diabetes. What are the signs and symptoms of type 2 diabetes? Without reversing pre-diabetes, 
blood sugar continues to rise and signs and symptoms of diabetes may develop. The most common symptoms are early signs of thirst and excess urination. Sometimes people will notice unexplained weight. Later signs of type 2 are fatigue, blur vision, slow healing wounds or bruises, thirst, um, and usually um, when you smell your urination and stuff. So again, that was my health tip for today on pre-diabetic diabetes um it's all about health your health is your wealth and guys you guys have to take care of yourself make sure that you know you're taking your supplements especially what the doctor order and i mean you know we got to have healthy lifestyle eating and our diabetic as i said before i was diagnosed with the uh both you know in the sense of the shingles taking the vaccination for my age and also um you know having pre-diabetes diagnosis so now i have to be very very careful of everything that i eat and i have to watch my diet and make sure that you know i'm eating the right stuff um for my lifestyle right Again, you could read up more about it, more about your health, um, as I say, and I always recommend you guys to Google, make sure that Google is your, your best friend, and you know, there you can get all your answers for everything that you want to, to read up about, um, about pre-diabetes and stuff, right? So guys, um... I have um, a special guest for you tonight. Um, it's the first female artist on my program, right? And I am going to introduce her. I'm going to um, play a little of her music first. Let's see if we get her online. And I'm going to introduce her, guys. We have Tara Lynn, who is going to join us on Motivational Monday. I'm going to play a little music of Tara so you guys can familiarize yourself with her. Okay, guys, welcome Tara Lynn. Uh, let Hello. Let's up a little about Tara, guys. Tara Lynn, she's from the Bahamas, guys. Uh, the Bimi Gal is a stunning Florida-based singer-songwriter with a fresh international song that blends R&B and urban tones with a sonic spike of the native Caribbean. Tara musical journey began in a hometown of Bimini. Am I pronouncing that correct? It's Bimini. 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 Okay. Yes. Bimini. Bahamas. Mm -hmm. Singing with her father's band, Oasis Brown and the Calypsonians at the legendary Complete Angler Hotel. It was event even at a young age that Tara talent and naturally ability would captivate her audiences. Guys, Tara, welcome Tara, and she can tell you more Thank about herself. Thank you so much. Yes, I'm excited to be here, and I think you definitely started off the right way because I always tell people I am Tara Lynn, the one and only Bimini gal. I always represent for my island of the Bahamas and the entire Caribbean. So yes. 
Yeah, my father was a calypso singer and a percussionist. So I grew up in music, around music constantly. And it just, you know, helped to cultivate my love for it. So that's where I am today, you know, just walking in that, doing what I love and being able to express myself through my music. Great. So what first got you into music, your dad? Oh, yeah, hands down. <laughs> Yeah, I used to go up on the stage and sing with him, you know, sing his songs and sing Bob Marley songs. I used to think they were his songs as well. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, he who inspired you? Pardon? He who inspired you to be having this musical career that you have right now? Oh, definitely. Definitely. You know, my father is no longer with us here physically on earth. So I feel like even as I do my music, you know, it's an expression, you know, just being able to live and keep his name going as well, you know? Right. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe the music that you create um, typically? Now, so, I know yeah. that I saw you on Ojo World. Um, you've been to Trinidad Carnival. You can yeah. tell us more about that. You can, yeah, you're my first female interviewer, songwriter singer so you know you have to give it that bang <laughs> hey, nice bop, bop, bop. <laughs> but yeah i would say that definitely you could categorize me as soca but i also dabble in like you said you know just reading with the bio you know i do pretty much i can do every genre you know so i can do a little bit of like the reggae and the dancehall stuff i mix it in and i think that's what makes music so beautiful right is that yeah. we can cross genres and it's still a part of our caribbean culture but mixing it is a melting pot so that's kind of how i would describe my music in terms of trinidad carnival all I can say is, wow, <laughs> like <laughs> that was an experience. It was amazing. But yeah, I've been down there a couple of times doing like radio promo and stuff like that. And I love Trinidad. I love doubles. Yes. That is like my favorite thing. As soon as I get off the head, I want to go to the doubles, man. And I want extra time, Bren. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, Tara, so you formerly from Bahamas originally. Go yes. on and grow. So let us know a little about your background. Yeah, well, again, like you said, I grew up in Bimini, which is seven miles long and a half mile wide. So when okay. you think about that, our population is about 2,500 people. So wow. I grew up, yes. So, and I can so give everybody you know everybody? Everybody know everybody. And I guarantee you, anybody you meet is probably second or third cousin. <laughs> somewhere around yeah. the line you know right, yeah. we made it somewhere or they know this for good like you know you can't hide from nothing but how, going up in such a small island in that tight right. community is something i would not change for anything it definitely makes me who i am you know having right. that part of my culture yeah very very good i've been to freeport and nice. i've been to nassau yeah, and beautiful island, beautiful beaches. I mean, it reminds me of home also, you know, yeah. island wide and mm -hmm. you know, island vibes you get, you know what I mean? So, yes, that's what I like about it. And, um, nice. you know, it's right there, so it's close by, you can go, you can it take is. a boat over, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? True. So, that's very, that's true. very good. So, what comes into your creative process? Like, um, how do you think I know I listen to um, the latest one that you have also? What came, what, what process you had with, you know, that and with COVID and oh. everything now, you know? Yeah, yeah. So that's a really good question. And that song is so personal to me. You know, we touched a little bit on my father, but just with all of the racial injustice, you know, people being murdered, left, right, front and center, like sitting at home during COVID was not easy in the beginning for sure. You know, because it was like, I was on the road. I was, yes. on the I was traveling. And as they started to cancel or things were getting postponed, I was like, whoa, well, this is kind of serious, I guess, you know. And it's like being confined and not able to move. It gave me so much time to just really evaluate your life. Yeah. yeah. You got yes. it. You yes. got it. And it was, it was just, I feel like it was necessary, you know. And yes. I wouldn't have been able to even write a song like what the world needs if that didn't yeah. happen. 
because my mind space was a bit there. You know, I wasn't even thinking about nothing like that. I was thinking about the next pet or the next party or like a different, you know, just a whole different um, energy that I was in. So yes. COVID played, played a huge part in um, this record, but it also allowed me to be very transparent, you know, right. and uh, to dig deep because what yes. the world needs is love, you know, even yes. if we don't agree or, you know, we could do it respectfully. Yeah, it doesn't always and have so to be. We can uh, agree uh, to disagree. You know, we don't have to exactly, be um, exactly. all nasty about it, or you know, be mm -hmm. vindictive to others. We two of us can't be the same. We have to be different. So mm -hmm. we agree to disagree, and people should respect boundaries. Yes, you know, I so, agree a hundred and ten percent. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. what advice would you give a young artist? coming up in this business, female artists, I know you, um, you, you, did you do any collaboration with anyone or you, did you sing with other female artists, soccer artists before? I have not done a collaboration. However, I was a part of the very first all females rhythm. Nice. Yes. And it featured, uh, records from, and songs from Fayan. Yes. Uh, J Bell. Patrice yes. Roberts and Nadia Batson. Nice. So that, yes. So that was huge for me, especially as a newer artist, you know, and not being from Trinidad and representing from a smaller island. It was yes. an honor to be featured amongst those, you know, pretty much great. Giant. Big names, you know? Yes. Yeah. So that was, that was wonderful to see that collaboration. So who would you like to collaborate with? Just, just. I definitely. artists. Oh, Do you for have a sure. favorite one? I definitely love Patrice Roberts. I love her her tone, her style, her versatility. And I think it'd be fun to do a record with her. Nice, nice. Yeah. And also, um, I saw you work with is Bojo Banta. We have some things. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. And yeah. um, you have a beautiful voice. Beautiful Thank voice. You. Thank you. You know, and um, you. what struggles or what challenges have you found in the industry so far? You know what? That's a really good question. I think that just to put it out there, I think we as women in any industry always have a challenge, right? Yes. Because we have sometimes we have to work even harder than our yes. male counterparts. So I yes. think that, you know, me being just completely honest, but like I said, it's not just even in the music industry, it's just in the world as general. So I think that sometimes we always have to put out a little bit more, you know, yes. just to yes. be taken like, hey, I'm here, you know, look at me, yes. recognize. So I think that sometimes that's a challenge because it is a, it's a male dominated industry and that's yes. just the reality of it. So I think yes. that sometimes that can be challenging. And that, that's, you have to work harder. Yes, you do. Yes, yes. You especially do. to get your name out there and mm -hmm. to be in the business and different things like that. But I think Absolutely. it's the right part, right? Mm -hmm. If you could open um, a show, uh, open a show for anyone, who would it be? Not only I'm so, so sorry. Artists, I had to... if, if you have the opportunity to open for a show, which artist, like, we're talking about international now. Who oh, would you Rihanna. really? Yeah. I love Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> yes. She is so vibesy to me, you know, and she's so versatile. So I yes. think I definitely would like to open up for her. Rihanna, Rihanna is a good, good one. <laughs> yes, she is. And I feel like it would be like so much fun backstage and stuff too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she she's a girly girl behind, yes. you know, her empire, she's a girly girl. And did you know she just became a billionaire? I know, huge, you know, with all the makeup and stuff. It, it's great to see our Caribbean girls doing our thing, honey. Yes, yes. So yes. how um how have you been liking it now in the United States? I know you live in Orlando area now. I do. Yep, mm -hmm. I've been living in the States for a while. And, you know, it's definitely, it's a big difference. <laughs> like I said, describing where I 
grown up, you know. So, you yeah, think this will know. give you more avenues to explore more of what you want? Definitely. Absolutely. Good. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you feel that the internet impacted your music? Social wow. media. Um, I, you know, I, can't touch even, a little on it. I can't even quantify. I just know that it is a huge, huge impact. I mean, one of the stories I always share with people is that I was at in London for Notting Hill Carnival. Mm -hmm. And as I was there, I was doing a performance and I was singing my song, Big and Sexy and Cute. Yeah. And I noticed there was like a bunch of girls in the corner and they were like singing word for word. And I was like, and I'm performing, but in my mind, I'm like, my mind's singing. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, wow. Well, so I like put the mic and I let them sing. And of course I'm better for them afterwards. But I was like, wow, you know, it's just the power of social media, you yes. know, DJs, people sharing and, you know, it's just huge. Yeah. You know, I feel like that has really created a lot of avenues also for independent artists. So where yeah. you don't have to be signed to a label and your music can go far. Very far. Mm -hmm. That's great. Especially with Instagram and TikTok and all these new ventures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Is there a particular musician you admire? Ah, that is so hard because I have, I feel like I have a lot, but I would probably say a musician I admire would be probably Quincy Jones. Yeah. Quincy Jones. Yeah. Yeah. He's old school, yeah. right? Yes. Yes. What is the most trouble you ever gotten into? Oh God, don't ask my mommy. <laughs> I will say this. Though, I don't know about the most trouble. Oh geez, this this is not a hard one because there's so many to pick from. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna tell the story. Okay. So well, I don't know if that was the most trouble. Oh gosh, you're stumping me here. <laughs> I I was I, I'm a middle child and I used to be like really like a tomboy so i used to be really rough with my brother and i think one time my mom told me i she was pushing him and she was like pushing in the in the stroller and i wanted to push him i was like no let me just push him push him and as i got the stroller i pushed him down the hill wow <laughs> i don't know why i did that i just was i was mischievous i was troublesome <laughs> <laughs> and i definitely got in trouble for that yes <laughs> <laughs> great what is the best advice you have gotten? Ooh, I would say hands down is stay true to yourself. Stay true to yourself. Stay true I think to a yourself. lot of people um, tend to lose um, or they pretend to be like others. But I think mm -hmm. staying true to yourself and your roots makes you special, makes you, you know, we could see you from a distance. Mm -hmm. And I could mm -hmm. tell you, you have, you have, I see great things for your future, Thank you know, you. Um, just looking at your music, looking at the way you perform, that voice, that voice, you know, you. I mean, kudos. So how do you keep the voice polished? You know, um, I will say that I do some vocal exercises, you know, especially before I perform, you know, to like warm up. So it's yeah. not like putting a lot of stress, especially during carnival time. And I also try to rest up as well. You know, sometimes yes. it's hard to do that when you have shows because you have radio and promo and things like that. But I try to take care of my voice. I don't do a lot of sugary drinks. Oh, and okay. then, yeah, I don't. And I don't drink any soda. Nice. Not that I don't drink anything with carbonation. And yeah. then I also don't do cold drinks. Really? So I, yeah. Yeah, I, I like room temperature water and right. or something hot. Right. But I don't do a lot of cold, no. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. that is very, very nice. Yeah. Um somebody saying Cuzzy. Nadia. Nadia! That's my Nadia, Nadia. Hannah. Yeah. <laughs> Love you, baby. Love you. Yeah. Um, so what what advice? As a matter of fact, Phil is going to cut you off, but she has made me some good, good tea when I was losing my voice, Mammy Carnival. 
Really? Yes, she sure did. I don't, I don't even remember what you, Nadia, what you put in there, but it yeah. helped bring my voice back to life because it was almost gone. Oh, that's that's nice. Well, you see, have <laughs> family, family first. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, how have you? Um, what have you? Uh, like COVID. I know last year was a tough year for all the artists and everything like that. How have you keep yourself sane? Um, I know that a lot of us was out of work and different things, and I mean, you know, how Tara kept herself sane. And I mean, two part question: um, How have you been? You know, have you been doing other online shows like other artists raising funds and different things like that? How have you been going so far? So I feel like I definitely have never stopped being creative yeah. and because of that i definitely get myself saying you know because i'm still doing what i love and still being able to engage with my community and my all yeah. ends you know people that support me so that wasn't um i wasn't disconnected from that the main thing was being disconnected from the audiences and that yeah. you know live interaction yes but i still have like my social media and i'm able to connect and then i have a very very strong family unit and support yeah. system so i can say i'm i know that i'm extremely blessed to have that and um that was some of the ways that i got through i did do some online performances to help um for um with barbados they were doing yeah. like rise for COVID and things like that so far on the line um participating in you know ig yes. um, interviews and things of that nature so i haven't felt too out of touch like i said the main thing that was just the performances the right. live performances yes yes and i know that could be different or challenging not seeing anyone and performing you know some people can't do that you know what i mean because mm -hmm. some people are custom having an audience for them to be singing and they're not seeing anyone. I'm thinking that might be a little difficult for some people, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it, it is different because you're not getting the energy. You're not seeing people jump up, but you're not seeing them singing along. You don't feel the vibe, you know? So it, it's a little bit different, but you know, we have like the hearts that people can put on the screen and stuff yes. in the comments, you know? Yes. So it's That's just a how you know the participating. Right. Mm -hmm. And um, so up this upcoming Miami Carnival, are you in it? Um, I, are you? I, yep, I will definitely be there for Miami Carnival. I'm going to be in um, New York. I'm going to be in Chicago, Columbus, all through next month and October. Okay, good. So, so I'm you... on the road. I went, I've been in Baltimore. I just did a show in Fort Lauderdale. So I out there again. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Yeah. I like your bubbly personality, you know? Thank I think it, it's good, you know, for people to mm -hmm. know who is Tara. So next time they see you, they could say, oh, I saw Tara, or they know the name. They're familiar with the name, the signature, yeah. you know? That's and right. So how do you keep up with all these different styles? Because I was looking at you, and I was like, oh, Tara, it's hard to keep up when I mean... <laughs> Being an artist, I know there's a lot with makeup and hair and different things. So do you have a stylist? Do you do it by yourself? What's the process? I have some really great cousins and friends that have an eye for things, you know, and it sometimes it might be something that maybe I wouldn't normally go for, but they'll be like, well, just try it, you know? And I'll be yes. Like, no, you know, that really is nice. <laughs> so I love that I have like my personal shoppers and people to help me. And I've always loved makeup. I love makeup from a long, long, long time. So most of the time, 98.5% of the time, <laughs> I do my makeup myself. Nice. And I love hair, hair colors and, you know, I, I'm always willing to try things, you know? I don't yes. like to stay in a rut too, too long. Right, right. Cause it's just yeah. hair. If I yeah. make it, I could dye it back black. That's correct. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love your hairstyle now. It look, it look. Thank itchy. you, <laughs> thank you. I know I get my little line from San, my little rude girl fan. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's nice. Um, mm -hmm. so if you can change anything about the industry, what would you think it would be? If you could change anything within the soca industry, what would it be? 
Um, I think we have this in Soka, but I would say, it wouldn't say I want to change, but what I would like to see is more collaborations with yes. artists. I think that would be really awesome. I think so. And I think um, more yet, I have seen a lot of collaboration coming up now, especially with the Vinci's, the Lucians, mm -hmm. you know? A lot of small islands too. Um, I mean, going to Uba Soka Cruise and having the experience and seeing them, they bring a lot to the table too. So mm -hmm. it would be really nice if everyone could just come together, you know, as one big family mm -hmm. and collaborate with, you know, Kess and different people, Marshall, you know, mm -hmm. all these big guns and stuff. I yeah. think it would be nice. Even the Bajans and them doing pretty good too, you know. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of, I saw for the first time, a lot of small islanders on the Uba Soka cruise. Nice. And, you know, they have that, they have that job, they have that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. It's vibey, it's vibey yeah. music. Yeah. yeah, it's vibey music, but that that is really good. So what's next for you? What's next for Tara? What's next is the sky's the limit. The best is yet to come, Phyllis. You know, I'm working on new music, constantly being creative and just, you know, being strategic with the releases. But I definitely have a lot of things in the vault. So you'll see me out there. You'll get a chance to see me in person somewhere, the city near you. <laughs> yes. And I'll be giving you some new music very, very soon. Good. So you want to give people your handle, your IG handle, so they can follow you. You know? Yeah, so my IG is T A R A L Y N N E M U S I C. So it's Terra Lynn Music. My website is the same thing, Terra Lynn with an E music.com. You can find me on any streaming service by Terra Lynn. It is two words, so Terra and then Lynn. And I also have a Pandora radio station for everyone in the States. You can actually add my station, Terra Lynn Radio. And uh, jam with me, who will they? Nice. Yes. So, is there anything else you want to tell us or sing for us? You want to give us a little music or you want to? Of course. I'm, yeah. I'm always ready to give some music. So, I, I this was my first song that I did. This is one of Sharon. This is, I think, Sharon's favorite song. So, we're going to do a little snippet of one yes. time. Yes. One time, one time, fell in love with me. One time when I get out with your wine. One time, one time, one time. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I mean, again, you, you, we, this program is really about motivating each other, motivating nice. the younger people that coming up and that, you know, want to be in the field of whatever it could be, you know? So, I mean, touching each and every one lives every day with positivity, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I created Motivation on Monday. You know, a lot of people have different struggles, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, it, it, you know, and as, as from a woman point of view, you know, I know we have challenges and it's a bit harder for us. We have to work a little harder in mm -hmm. our male dominant, you know, career. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, with you coming on this afternoon and letting people know it's okay, it's hard work, perseverance to get through, to climb that ladder, mm -hmm. to keep focus, and to always, I, I can tell that you're a child of God, so you put God first, I'm mm -hmm. sure I can hear it in your voice, and mm -hmm. that's a blessing, you yes. know, because someone out there who's watching, you know, they may not have that knack or feel, but you know, persevering and, you know, even if it, as you do, take a, a break and you come back into the arena, but you mm -hmm. come back with a bang. Yeah. You know? Well, one thing that, you know, I, it, I think is very important that people understand is that in life, you will have challenges. Yes. You're going to have disappointments. Yes. Everything that you do is not going to work. But when you fail, fail forward. When you fail, fail fast and get back up again. You know, yeah. it's yeah. just don't stay there. Yes. So that's the main thing is being resilient. That yes. is actually the word that I think that people have to really get in their spirit and in their mindset. Because if yes. you're not resilient, then you're never going to reach the goals that you want or that you see for yourself. Yeah. And I mean, you really have to see those goals for yourself. Eh? Yes, you do. Yep. Yes, you yeah. do. Because it's the vision is your vision. 
and that you can't always expect everybody to understand your vision. That's why you have to have it. You have to have yeah. it here to be able to keep going. So how do you deal with um, negativity? That's a good question. How I do don't, I don't deal with negativity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I absolutely don't. And you know what? I, I'm in a really, really good place. It took me a long time. I would say really to get here because I don't take things personal. Right. Negative. If it's something that's negative, I don't give attention to it Very because good. it doesn't apply to me. You know, I deal yeah. with love and positivity, good energy and good vibes. And I believe what you put out is what you're going to get back. And that's what I get, get from you today. You know, your positive bubbly vibe, mm -hmm. you know, and that mm -hmm. is good because you know what, what you put out and what you get is what you put out. That's right. Universe. Listen, it's the same thing. If you even biblical is the laws of attraction and it's the Bible. What you saw, you're going to reap. It didn't say yeah. what you saw, cousin, you're going to reap. Well, no, what exactly you saw, that is what you shall reap. Yes. <laughs> and Anthony wants to know about the famous conch salad. <laughs> oh, gosh. Conch salad. Yes, that's definitely, definitely, probably the number one thing any bohemian will tell you they love. Now, me personally, I feel like I eat conch salad so much in my life. Yes. I, I don't even hardly just want to touch it. Now, crab conch, that's what yes. I just do. I can eat that all the time. That's when you, like, bruise the conch to make it tender and you fry it. In, like, a oh, little... really? Yes. Oh, that that, that, that's what I like. I like crab <laughs> conch. Yeah. Yeah. But conch salad oh. is good, too. It's like a ceviche, you know? It's like very... Yeah, it's like ceviche. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, really... but you know, he's, he's you know, from... Uh, well, he, he knows some people from Bahamas if you know about conch Yeah, he know. He, yeah, he's trained with that. and just uh, okay, okay. about that because he have a friend that brings it over for him oh nice nice yes, okay yes, you know mm -hmm. so is there anything else out there you want to give a, a, a positive note before you leave oh i just want to thank everyone who is on here right now listening live anybody that's watching this video in the future thank you for joining and taking the opportunity to listen to me to get to know my music a little bit about myself and you know hopefully follow and support my musical journey so thank you in advance for that good 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 i want to say thank you so much for taking the time oh, i know well, you're very you busy you know and we, it was just uh nobody will think it just happened you know that's how yeah i know because sherry called me and i was like well okay i just i was traveling today i just got back from miami because i had a show down there this weekend yeah, so it, yeah. it were everything worked out oh all well and fine you know yes yes but um you stay positive stay up um yes. we can bring you on again in the program later on this year after miami mm -hmm. carnival you nice. know um, yes. anthony said great performance on saturday night at oh Lal thank you he was there yeah. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes Nice. And hopefully when you come to New York, I'll get to see you. But definitely for Miami Carnival, I'll be down at Miami Carnival. So I'll make it known to come and meet with you on different things like that. Perfect. Yes, we'll get it done for sure. Yes, yes. yes. So thank, thank you, you for having me. me. And wonderful week. Again, I know you're busy, but thank you so much for spending your time with us. You know, letting us know a little bit about yourself. And, you know, just blessing upon blessing. Same to you. Same to you. Thank All right. you. And All you right. can watch this episode back on YouTube, Phyllis Warrell. I'll upload it and you can look at it or share it with anybody who wants to see it and stuff. Perfect. Perfect. All right. All right. Have a good night. Have a blessing. All right. Have a good Have one. Good okay, guys. There you have it. Um, Tara Lynn uh you know beautiful beautiful soul i'm gonna play a little of her music guys you can youtube you can instagram you have on facebook a beautiful beautiful soul i'm just talking about what she's doing out of bahamas and you know just having the music live um bringing the love and culture to all of us you know, mm -hmm. as we say again, each one, teach one, and you know, that's how we do it. That's how we do it. You know, you can take in some of her music now. And 
Good, good, good vibes. Yes. What the world needs. The world needs love. motivational monday once again thank you guys for hanging with me you know and tara beautiful beautiful all blessings to her thank you so much for hanging with us on motivational monday guys this is the time you know you know just spreading love unity blessings you know i mean what the world needs is love and i mean that's a powerful 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 song and we want to just say thank you thank you good night good night karen thank you guys again and you know each one teach one as we always say right so blessings guys it was an honor have a blessed and wonderful week um thank you again for all my diehard who logged on with me from since january we rocking in august and we're going the distance. We're going the distance. Once again, don't forget Phyllis Barbecue Blessings, September the 5th, guys. Come out, you know, bring a friend and you'll mingle. All right? Have a blessed and wonderful week. Once again, you can look back at this episode on YouTube, Phyllis Warrell. Please subscribe and love in the house. Mwah. Thank you, Instagram. Thank you, Facebook. Blessed night, everyone. Thank you, Beth. Bye, guys. Bye. See you guys next week. God's willing. Good night, then. See you guys. Love any house. Love any house.